Hello everyone, my hero is here and now it's time for me to recite my imaginative recount as the project. Here I will tell you a story based on a movie, Dead Poet Society, with some twist here and there, so I hope you enjoy listening to me coming up with my imaginations. September 1959, a week since autumn started. A Monday morning, with a crisp air, I felt nothing but thrilled. I had my brown hair freshly trimmed, my suitcases were all packed, put on my Wilton Academy blazer with my name tag with Marilyn Brown written over it, hanging on the right side of my blazer, and achievement pins almost all over on the left side of my blazer, and I knew for a fact that having this many achievement pins would make my parents stop meeting my grades. To which I would say, the new beginning of the terms always got me beyond excited. Being in private boarding school didn't have to make me lock tap in my room all day for quite a long time, or else my parents would yell at me for whatever reason. Yet, summer break has ended today, and at last, I was sitting inside the stone chapel of Real Academy next to my parents, with the hundreds of students in the room also surrounded by their proud parents, the most prestigious private boarding school nestled in the remote hills of Fairman. Students would sometimes call it Hilton, and it was every bit as tough as to say unless you were geniuses, but at least I could call it a real home. Four boys each holding up a banner, march as the sound of big pipes filled the air, continued with the speech from Headmaster Gail Nolan as the part of the ceremony. In the middle of the ceremonial speech, Headmaster Gail Nolan introduced us to the new, soon-to-be English teacher, Mr. John Keating. He looked kind and genuine, that was my first ever thought about him. Ceremony was dismissed, my parents said their goodbyes, and as soon as they left, I ran to the girls' dormitory to unpack my bags because I had to get myself in the boys' dorm real quick. It was weird to see a girl wandering around the boys' area, but it was not the first time for them to see me hanging out there, so it was a common thing for the boys. I reached the second floor to finally burst into one of the rooms, Neil Perry room. Neil Perry was the most outgoing person I had ever met, and we'd already became friends the moment we both got into Welton. I realized he was not alone anymore. He had got a roommate now, a new kid. Ted Anderson was his name. A quiet, anxious-looking boy with strawberry blonde hair and soft features. What I noticed about him was that he had those light gray eyes as I did. The three of us gathered in the main hallway, waiting for five boys to finally approach us. Charlie Dalton, he was the second person I met friends with after Neil. Stephen Meeks. Jared Pitts, Richard Cameron, and Axalver Street. They were the reason why I called this school home. They were my real family to say the least. First day of school was already tough ones. We had chemistry, trig, Latin, and now English. With a new teacher, Mr. John Keating. I was very excited seeing this new teacher even though I did not expect anything much. Well, and teachers were always either boring or scary. There was no in between. Turned out I was wrong for that one. The first day with Mr. Keating was just different. Since then, I was looking forward to attending his class every single day. And one day after lunch, Neil Perry came back from the library bringing us an old annual from the year 45. It was the profile of our teacher, Mr. Keating. He achieved so many things according to this annual, and what grabbed our attention the most was the fact that he was part of Dead Poet Society, which sounded strange to us. Then the eight of us looked for Mr. Keating and asked him about it. He told us it was a secret society where he and the other boys recited poetry or a story in a cave beyond the stream, brought our special belongings there to be shown to the other poets, and it was no longer a secret to us anymore. Neil came up with the idea first that we should recreate that society. Charlie and I were in. Well, everyone else thought he was losing his mind, but in the end, we all agreed that tonight we were going to that cave. In the cave, Neil reconvened the dead poets and poetess society since I was the only girl here. We were taking turns reciting poetry, telling stories, and except for Todd, he preferred not to read or else he wouldn't join us here at all. Then, it was time for us to show our special belongings that we practically could not live without. Surprisingly enough, Todd Anderson had finally fought his shy demon, 
this time, and he stood up, declaring he wanted to go first. He barely looked at us. He pulled a piece of paper out of his pocket, shakingly. He was incredibly nervous. We knew that, but we could see the eagerness in his eyes. He showed us a half-ripped photo with a hole on it. He said he found it hidden on his father's work desk. When we looked at it closely, it was a heart-shaped hole right on the face of a kid, and he recognized his childhood clothes. Everyone gasped, and all eyes were on me as they recognized something that I had taught them way back then. And my jaw dropped to the ground as my hand grabbed a similar thing from my pocket, half-ripped photo with a heart-shaped hole on the face, to which back then I found it under the bed. Charlie grabbed both my hand and tots to put them together. It made a whole piece of photo paper showing two kids standing next to each other without faces. Todd and I looked at each other in disbelief. Cameron, Meeks, and Pitts insisted that Todd and I were childhood friends. They thought the idea of us being siblings was too much to handle. While Neil, Charlie, and Knox refused to believe them by saying that we were indeed lost siblings due to the same eye color and sight profile that we both had. So I wondered if that was only true because this whole time my parents treated me like a piece of garbage. As one day Mr. Keating called us both to his office. We tried to keep it a secret, somehow Mr. Keating found out eventually. He looked so pale and sometimes smiled a little. He asked us how our parents had been treating us both all this time, and Todd and her son, with his trembling voice and teary eyes, said that his parents sometimes said that they didn't want him. Giving us the same energy as my parents, who also wanted my grades and achievements, not myself. We were just going through the same problem after all. Mr. Keating couldn't help but cried and hugged us. It was the moment when he took a little box from his pocket and showed us a pair of heart lockets that were inside it. He refilled both sides with each photo on them, the faces of a little boy and a little girl. Those were the heart cutouts from each half-ripped photo we owned inside a locket. Finally, his long quest had been paid off. We both were Mr. Kidding's children and Todd Anderson was my long lost twin. We immediately got out of our previous parents who took us the moment our mother died in a car accident leaving Mr. Kidding alone in confusion. February 4th, 1959, the last snowy night, I thought I just I would be doing fine for the rest of my life with the fact that I was actually Marilyn Kidding with Todd Kidding as my twin and John Kidding as my father. So that's the end. Um, it was at first longer than this one, but I'm sure that this was enough for you to enjoy every bit and pieces of this imaginative recount. And thank you so much for watching until the very end of the video, and I hope that you have an amazing week.